Okay. Hello? Hi. Hello. Hey, it worked. Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to the stream. Um, I had to fix something real quick. Yes, thank you, Leaf, for helping me through that. It looks like it worked. Um, so let's go ahead and switch over. Hope everyone's having a great Sunday there. And yeah, welcome on into our... It's going to be bi-weekly, but this is kind of a weird catch-up time where we're doing weekly uh, community showcases. This will be the last weekly community showcase, so we will skip next week. And then we'll be live again the week after, which should be perfect timing, right? Should be perfect timing because um, the week after should be around the Wetlands DLC release and everything there. So I think that'll work itself out pretty well there. So again, um, hello everyone, welcome in. And yeah, that's our announcement for today. Um, we'll be back on the bi-weekly schedule for the community showcase starting next week. So no community showcase next week, but one in two weeks. There we go. Nailed it. Got it. Good. So, okay. Hope everyone's having a good one. Let's jump in because if you look down below in the description and you are a fan of ooh, Cherry Pepsi, uh, you are a fan of animal, mod, animal mods. There, I can speak the English. Um, yeah, we have a lot. <laughs> we have a lot to go over. And first things first, um, before I forget, uh, shout out to Leaf. Look at this. Savannah invited you here. I hope Savannah's sh uh, stream was awesome for everyone. I had her on in the background while I was preparing today's showcase. Um, ah, excuse me. But um, but anyways, yeah, welcome in Savannah viewers. Again, I hope you all enjoyed her stream there as she was making her Australian. Um, did, we just, did she decide what animal was going in there? It was like an Australian habitat though. It's pretty awesome. It was pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Leaf. Look at this, Leaf was just like sick of seeing my half-butted community showcase sprawl, my half, uh, my showcase map, and was like, let, listen, listen, let me, let me go ahead and, and make something here for you. Look at so look, we have like the hippodrome going on here, and then we have uh, the main animal, like land animal area over this way, and then I just kind of use these wings as the uh, like showcase area there. So it's, it's pretty cool. I, I like it. I like it. So again, big shout out to uh, Leaf for taking the time to, uh, to to make this up here because this is, I'm almost like looking like I have a professional thing going on here. <laughs> it's almost like a halfway professional thing there. So awesome. Hey, Savannah, good to see you there. What's up, Domez? Good to see you, buddy. Decent. I'm just seeing random people in chat. Seabris going to be holding down the uh, fort today by themselves, I believe. I do believe Silver Fox is gone. Busy, busy is um but cool let's go ahead oh I'm, not, I'm looking in the wrong spot oh my gosh i haven't played the game in about a month and i'm freaking out all right let's go ahead and start with our animals huh let's start with the animals and we're gonna kind of go um all in a different order you know let's go ahead and let's do this we'll do this order yeah, animal storage right no i'm crazy yeah, we'll do it this way. All right, so let's start up here with the African shark, shark, sharp tooth um, catfish. And this is, oh, I don't have my notes up. I'm not ready at all. I am just all over the place. Universe help us. Uh, all right, so let's find out who this is from. Probably Buff, Zoo, and Leaf. Um, it's gonna take me a little bit to get through the notes. Cause yeah, again, if you look down below, we have a boatload, an absolute boatload of mods to go through today. So, but whereas there it is, this is the last one. Yes, this is by Leaf and Buff Zoo. And yeah, let's take a look at this guy. Where are you? Are you still stuck in the, all right, it's still stuck in the thing here. It's okay. Something wrong with the raisin catfish. Let me see if I can fix them for next version. No worries, resubmit them in. Resubmit them, no, wor no worries. There you go, there's Lulu, our African sharp tooth catfish. Love them. Thank you, Fish Crazy, I appreciate you, buddy. But pretty cool there. All right, nice. Let's move on to the next one. Hopefully, I don't feel like uh, or sound rushed. We just have a, again, a boatload of animals to get through a, a bunch of different uh, mods and everything. It's not trying to rush through it, but also trying to keep the pace up, as it were. <laughs> next up, we have the uh, Amazonian Apapa. What a fun name. The Amazonian Apapa. And this is going to be from Leaf and Buff Zoo. 
Seabris, I'm just going to keep saying it today, but appreciate you because we are going to be all over the place, unfortunately. And you are all by yourself there, but yeah, appreciate you putting in the work today. <laughs> but here we go, amazing uh, Amazonian Apapa from Leaf and Buff Zoo. Uh, mo most of the animals today are from Leaf and Buff Zoo. Most of the fish and everything, so keep that in mind. Next up, though, let's take a look at the Arctic Ground Squirrel. Love this thing. <laughs> Love this little thing. Moving over to the land area. Look at these guys. Oh, let's actually turn on the... Uh, Turn, not turn on, but uh, make the grass a little bit easier to see through here. Yeah, look at we have the our Arctic ground squirrels. Look at these. <laughs> That's awesome. It's a little bit like stubbier, I guess you'd say, than the squirrels that I'm used to seeing around uh, my neck of the woods here. Like the ones that I see are really uh, stringy. They're almost like string bean looking. But, um... But yeah, no, here's the... Arctic ground squirrels, and that's going to be from uh, Leaf and Phonetic Mods. So good job from them. Next up, let's look at the Black Marlin. This is really cool. I like this one a lot. So the Black Marlin is coming to you probably from Leaf and, oh, where are you at? There you are. Leaf and Buff Zoo, but let's double check here. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Yep, Leaf and Buff Zoo with the Black Marlin. Pretty neat there. They're supposed to go in the water, but they can't swim um, since they're based on the. Oh, the hippo! But you can just. I gotcha. I gotcha. They're related to uh, classic squirrels, they just don't live um, arboreal lifestyles. Gotcha. That's fun, uh, FYI. <laughs> Next up, let's do. Oh, this one was cool because there's um yeah the chittle, chittle. There's two different variations of it here. Oh, I actually have two males. Didn't even realize that. But uh, yeah, we have like a, a black one and then a I guess you'd say normal like coated one. Look at these guys. The chittle. Is that one? And then here's the black coated one. Look at the horns, though. Aren't, those are really impressive. Very, very cool. So that is coming to you from... Gosh, there's just so many today. Where is it? Oh, it's the first one. Uh, Gaboy and Giorno Pizza. Gaboy and Giorno Pizza. Yeah, they have the horns, right? That's the first thing you kind of notice when you see them. The horns are just like, whoa. <laughs> Don't mess with me. Oh, here's the uh, this next one, the Carmen, uh, Common, excuse me, Carmen Marmoset. Love this guy. Love these little dudes. Look at them. <laughs> they have like that Albert Einstein hair, don't they? Cheetal. Thank you. Deer from India. They're wicked. They are, yes. Uh, but here's the Carmen Marmoset, and this is from Leaf. Doing the solo work here. I think Leaf has a few solo projects this week. Ah, excuse me, I had to get a drink of my cherry Pepsi. There they go, strutting their stuff on the way out. But good job from Leaf, the Carmen, common marmoset. I want, I keep wanting to put the word marmoset in the word common. It's like Kerman. But I think a lot of people are going to get a kick out of that mod there. Next up, let's look at the Stingrays. A common one. There's a few other stingrays we're going to look at this week as well. But here's the common stingray. Doing its thing, strutting its stuff. He's so fluffy! <laughs> oh, they, they really are, aren't they? Not the stingrays, obviously. If someone were to say a stingray's fluffy, then I'd be, be like, hmm. But yeah, can we have a little talk here, a little chat? Look at this, this is really cool. Imagine like a touch pool kind of setting. Could definitely picture that. Okay, there you go. Seabrus is caught up a little bit more. I just realized I'm going really fast for uh, for Seabrus to keep keep caught up. Oh, we have a beached whale. Get out, get back in the water there, whale. Next up, scrolling on down the list. There we go. We have the uh, Couvert's beaked beaked whale. Well, they look like beached whales over here, but I think that's them right there. Yeah, it is. So beaked whale, and I'm pretty sure they get their name from their beaked stouts there. Pretty cool looking. It's kind of nice that they're out of water. You get a pretty neat uh, look at them. 
It would be cool if one of them jumped in. Got to see it swimming around. Oh, they're loving the little... <laughs> That's really funny looking. He's just enjoying the, uh, the little water spout there. Uh, Pope sleep to his mom. If that helps, Zebras, yeah, because I mean, most of them are from uh, Leaf, but it's also from Leaf and Buff Zoo. So if you do notice that the majority of them like are on Leaf's mod page, then sure, that, uh, that, that'll probably help out a little bit since we are running one mod down today. Good idea, Claire. Cool. Let's go ahead and check out the next one. I keep clicking on that for some reason. Don't click on that. That's a good uh, good idea, Frazzle, with the new um, terrain brush that we're getting. Don't forget in the 1.9, yeah, that's right. Yeah, one 1.9 update, we're getting that new terrain brush to make uh, shallow pools of water really easy uh, to make. So yeah, we could almost make a touch pool with these Stingray mods um, with that new terrain brush. I can't wait to try that out. I think I'm almost more excited to try out the terrain brush than I am to like check out a lot of the animals. No, that's that's not true at all, actually. Right when I said it, right, like right when the words came out of my mouth, I was like, that's not true. <laughs> Look at this thing though, is this a caiman? No, this is a dinosaur. It's a dinosuckus, dinosuckus. I feel like you have to say it like that when uh, when saying it. Uh, but this is going to be from the Dinosuckus Rio Grande Nasus from Leaf uh, and Mega Gaming Rex. And look at this hunk a hunk of dunka right here. Look at this absolute Chad going straight through. <laughs> I love it. Seabirds is like, no, I'm determined. I'm going to be able to do this. <laughs> That's awesome. There was another one too, wasn't there? Just, I want to see it like swimming through the water if it is swimming. It might be in the, uh, the big black box, the flooded black box. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> it's feeding time. Well, yeah, that's really cool. That might be one of my favorite ones this week. You can see what you got to fix. I love that. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Next up, cruising our way through. We have the Egyptian goose. Oh, I love this too. I loved this as well. I see you, Leaf, on uh, Discord there. I appreciate that. I'll check it out um, later this week. But look at this Egyptian goose here. From Leaf and Bongo, the two mod extraordinaires teaming up to bring us, look at them, crawling through the grass. <laughs> it's a prehistoric crocodile. Oh, okay, gotcha. Gotcha, T-I-L. I think it has some pink feet, holy cow. Oh, same with the other, uh, the other sex here. Hey, Jake, how are you doing, buddy? Hey, Jake. So cool. That's funny. You can see the. Uh, let's see if it pops up. This side. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's fun to see the animals uh, swimming over here. Egyptian goose. I know. Well, look at it. it looks like a pharaoh, doesn't it? <laughs> when these geese die, you mummify them. You wrap them up and mummify them. So don't forget it. So nice. Very good stuff there. Did I mention who that was from? Yeah, Bongo. Right, Bongo and Leaf. But yeah, again, really cool to see Bongo Hardwood and. Uh, Leaf teaming up. It's exciting stuff there. No, that's not what I want. Going to the wrong thing. Um, next up, let's do some more burbs, huh? So we'll go from Egypt to Eurasia. <laughs> let's do the Eurasian uh, curlew. Never heard of this fowl before. Look at this. What's up, little dude? Kind of looks like a, um, an ibis, an ibis. I don't know if that's too far-fetched to say. He's so cute, I love him. <laughs> so you got a little dude, and then you got another one next to him. Almost looks like uh, like mallard feathers on an ibis. Ibis. I don't. I never know which one it is, so I just ibis. <laughs> They're not supposed to be white. Go check the other one out. Okay, don't worry about that one. That is a textureless uh, thing. What is this called again for real? I have Ibis and Eurasian Curlew. Uh, yeah, this would probably be from Leaf and someone else, I'm guessing. <laughs> let's see. From, let's see, Eurasian, Eurasian. Ah! There it is, Ginger Toast and Leaf. That's right, yeah, you and Ginger Toast did a few together this week as well. 
So cool, Eurasian Curlew. Oh, no worries, Amber. Um, yeah, I'll try and repeat them as many times as, uh, as I can, but uh, don't forget down in the description down below, I have a link to all the different uh, mods and everything. So if you just happen to miss one, uh, go on a clicking spree. We have a lot of mods this week to click through, unfortunately, but yeah, they are all linked down below if anyone does uh, miss out which ones they are there. And don't forget when you go there to um, like the mods and endorse them. So don't forget to endorse, which is basically like liking and favoriting on the Nexus page. Next up, we have the winner of the mods. Just it wins mods. So all the rest of the mod uh, modders can just stop while they're ahead. Uh, from Leaf and Leaf by themselves, I believe, right? Yeah, just Leaf. We have Gary the Snail. Gary the Snail from... The documentary SpongeBob SquarePants. So, um, yeah, again, we, we have found it. The elusive Gary. Just the next thing we need now is just uh, custom audio so that we can get Meryl in there as he's, you know, snailing along. <laughs> oh, no. Only the best. Yes, only the best. We only... <laughs> We only feature the absolute best mods. So yeah, I think I'll just leave the, uh, I'll just leave it on here. We don't need to look at anyone else's mods or blueprints or anything because I think Leaf won the game. If there was a way to to win Planet Zoo, I think this is how you win Planet Zoo. So everyone else, we can just kind of watch in glory. <laughs> He's just a vibing and a bob and he is, right? You can just picture like a Bob Marley song being played in the background. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, so yeah, absolutely fantastic from Leaf. And I do hope we see some Gary builds uh, in the future. We need Gary builds or SpongeBob builds in Z future. <laughs> nice. All right, next up, let's go to the another eel here. Uh, we have the green moray eel. There we go. Green moray eel. That so. Um, but yeah, here we go. Green Mori Eel. That's going to be from, I'm sure, Leaf and Buff Zoo. I am correct. Green Mori Eel from Leaf and Buff Zoo. But there you go. I like the coloring on that. Kind of orange into like a toxic green look. Yeah, very nice stuff. Next up. Oh, yeah. If you hear coughing in the background, my wife is uh, home with a head cold started at the uh, end of last week and then carried on to the weekend she i don't think she caught what i had because it's been like a week since i was sick or a little over a week so i don't think it's that but yeah she got her sick herself so you might hear her hacking up a lung in the background a little bit what's up here you good to see you buddy <laughs> they're incredibly uh rare they are found on the coast of comoros and have been seen only three times still now four Right? We've seen them four times now as of today. Uh, next up, though, <clears throat> excuse me, we have the Hood Island Giant Galapagos Tortoise. And this is going to be from Leaf in his solo career. Leaf pulled a Justin Timberlake. Broke off from the, the mod squad. This is what we get from Leaf's solo career. Watch the, uh, I don't, I don't. I don't, I'm not trying to like be a dick, but you know, I just try to like point certain things out because I know Leaf said that he's looking for things. I got for the footsie there. But overall, that's pretty cool. Hood Island, Hood Island Galapagos Giant Tortoise. That's a name. H I G G T. Higgit. <laughs> They're also known as the Saddleback Tortoise. They have cool shells. But yeah, they do have really cool big shells. They look like a big old, big old goy. Humboldt Squid is wicked unique, so keep in mind it's based on the Sea Lion rig, edited and completed from scratch. That's interesting. Okay, good to know. Helps result in a better uh, mod in the end. Yes, absolutely. I agree. I agree. Cool. All right, let's look at the next one. That's really good. To, um, see, I love when the builders and creators are here to hear about back info like that. Uh, next up, let's look at the, yes, the Humboldt Squid. So just to reiterate from the creator himself, uh, the Humboldt Squid is wicked unique. So keep in mind, it's based on the Sea Lion Rig, edited, uh, completed from scratch. It's wicked awesome mod to work on. Very cool. Very cool. 
All right, let's take a look at this Mamma Jamma. Oh, it looks like a spider in there. I hate it. Stop, stop looking like that. Don't look like that. Look like a squid. Please? Be a squid. Oh, it's so weird how you got all the... Uh, it almost looks like all the tentacles are moving in... Uh, difference. I don't know what the words are. <laughs> hey, Zoo, what's up, buddy? Not super fun. That doesn't sound fun at all, actually. Uh, but here you go. Here's the Humboldt squid. Creepy little thing. Let's try and get it in the water. I'm gonna try and get it up, uh, place it up here by the water. It's tortoise from the hood. It is. It's, it, it was a hooded. It was a hood tortoise. Just like there's leprechaun in the hood, there's tortoise in the hood. Oh, there we go. Cool. Let's see it swim a little bit. Do its thing. Yeah, very nice there. Humboldt squid. Dives. There it goes. Ooh. It's kind of creepy looking. I don't know. <laughs> I've always been kind of weirded out by uh, squids, though. What's up, basic? Good to see you, buddy. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Scrolling on down. Having to scroll a little bit more now. Where are we at? We're about halfway. A little over halfway. Let's go to the large head hair tail. This is coming to you from large. There it is, Leaf and Buff Zoo. Look at this thing. Long, slim, slender, blue looking mamma jamma. Do you love the squid? I'm I'm with Zoo. I think it's terrifying. I uh, personally, there's just something that gives me the heebie jeebies about him. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, what was it again? The large tail something something? <laughs> Sorry, I'm terrible with names. I'll see it here in a second. Large uh, large head hair tail. There it is. Cool. Uh, next up, let's look at a gar. A long nose gar. But it's also a very tiny little thing. What's up, little dude? Did you know that we don't know where eels come from? They come from the water. Psh, scientists always trying to think too much when the answer's right in front of them. Where do eels come from? Water, see? Psh. But anyways, you know where the long-nosed gar comes from? Well, that comes from, that was a good transition, wasn't it? Uh, Leaf and Buff Zoo, boom, hell yeah. Next up. Oh, this one was cool. I've never heard of this before, but uh, the Mata Mata Turtle. Wait, look at this little thing waddling around. What's up, little dude? Just having a race with himself here. Like, the neck is, like, super weird in a cool way, and, like, the flat head. It looks like someone, like, hammered its head a bunch of times. It kind of looks like a Lord of the Rings, like, villain in turtle form. It's like an orc turtle. They come from space, man. Yeah, space eels. <laughs> We've never seen baby eels. They just sort of show up. Oh, I'm gonna need a, I'm gonna need a second opinion on that because that's, that's crazy talk. I don't fully doubt you. I like 25% doubt you. You know what I mean? That's just one of those things you hear that and you're like, wait, what? We've never seen a baby eel? Come on, we've had to have seen like an eel that's smaller than other eels. They don't all just show up and be like, hi, I'm an eel. You know what I mean? Or do they? Is there like a stork bringing in eels that are just fully grown and like diving underwater with them? That's what your grandpa used to look like. Oh man, he was a cute fella. Tell you what. Oh, next up, we tried to look at this. I remember this specifically because I was really excited to look at it. Uh, we tried to look at this a few months ago, but it unfortunately was having some uh, issues. Very happy to say that the issues have been um, ramified there. And look at this. Look at this, the North American, uh, excuse me, North American Porcupine from Frazzle64. I absolutely love this. This is easily a top 10, top five mod here. Not just today, like overall. I love porcupines. I don't know. There's just something about them that is just 
so interesting the fact that it's a walking cactus Whoa, guy, slow down there. Hold on, hold on, guy. Whoa, holy cow. It's very fast. Um, it's very thirsty, that's why. But yeah, the, just the fact that it's a walking cactus just has always fascinated me. So yeah, uh, 10 out of 10 for me on the uh, on the porcupine, porcupine mod from Frazzle64, uh, right? Yeah, Frazzle64. Yeah, what a cute little dude, right? Yeah. It's Sonic, exactly. No one go spray paint porcupines, please. Wait, he's a hedgehog, not a not a porcupine. He inherited the beaver speed. Yes, he did. That's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, was it? Okay, well, I'm glad you figured it out, uh, Frazzle, because, yeah, again, this, these are one of my favorite animals, so I was uh, very, very excited to see that you, uh, you had that all figured out and everything. So, yeah, everyone, go support that. Go get the uh, North American porcupine. Fits right into the North America pack, doesn't it? So if you uh, have the North America pack or don't have it, I think it might be on sale, by the way. If uh, anyone has been on the fence about uh, Planet Zoo or Planet Zoo DLCs, um, I believe that it's part of like SimFest right now, so it's on sale. Or a lot of uh, things are on sale for it. So you might be able to pick up some DLCs and stuff for a little bit cheaper. Uh, but cool, hey, next up. Steve. We gotta go check out Steve. He's a nurse shark. Of course he's a nurse shark named Steve. Why wouldn't he be? What's up, Steve? Alright, everyone. This is my pal Steve. He's in the, he's a nurse shark. He works long hours. Usually on weekends, but you know, he still tries to get out and meet people from time to time. But yeah, the nurse shark is gonna be from uh I'm gonna guess Leaf and Buff Zoo. And I was correct. There you go. Look at this guy. So these are one of those sharks that uh, they don't really... Are they like bottom feeders? Is that what they're called? Mainly bottom feeders there. What's up, MS Queen? Good to see you, my friend. Hope you're having a fantastic Sunday. Welcome on into our community showcase. You, you fed a nurse shark a hamburger once? Oh my gosh. Oh, he's gone. Hey, that's that's nice camouflage, actually. I bet they do they actually do that. Do you think in the wild, like cover themselves in uh, sand? Isn't there a shark that does that? It might not be the uh, sand or the nurse shark, but then it like covers itself in uh, sand and then it waits for its prey to get kind of close, and then it's like whap. I love animals that kind of do that stuff. Whatever that spider is that does that too, like the uh, the orb spider or the heck, I can't remember names of animals ever. Or makes a little burrow, waits for things to like walk by it, then it comes out, whoosh, grabs it, pulls it into its little burrow. Ah. <laughs> Next up, though, after the nurse shark, after Steve, we're all done with Steve. We're going to go take a look at uh, Luke, who is an oceanic white tip shark. Where's he at? There he is. He's marching up. Time to go swimming. So the, uh, the oceanic white tip shark is from Leaf and Buff Zoo as well. Oh, look at this guy. A little bit smaller shark, or I guess you'd say medium size. Hmm. Don't worry, I clapped you on Thursday. <laughs> no, don't be clapping, Steve. Steve's our buddy. We like Steve. Luke, Lucas, though I'm not too sure about Lucas. Did you really, Max? That's cool. So they're a little bit of more of a timid shark. Oh, that's cool, J. Rassic. Angel Shark and Carpet Shark bury themselves in the sand. Are Nurse Sharks... Nurse Sharks equals dolphins? Are you asking, like, yeah, are they kind of timid like dolphins? Could be. Yeah, all the sharks? Yeah, there, there's a lot of really good ones. And Leaf uh, mentioned to me that there are going to be a lot more fish coming in the next uh, few weeks there. So hopefully everyone is digging the fish. They are not going anywhere. I gotta make sure that I'm, we're still listening to okay music here. Okay, we're good. I got hit with a copyright claim last week for the uh, for the stream. I think we accidentally listened to like one or two non <laughs> like whatever songs. It's pissed. All right, next up, let's look at the um, what is this one called? The Orinoco peacock bass. Another very interestingly colored and looking fish here. Oops. I hit T when I didn't want to hit T. But look at that. The Orinoco. What are you called? 
<laughs> peacock bass, that's it. The Orinoco peacock bass. And this is gonna be from Leaf and Buff Zoo. Yeah, again, love the colors on this, very vibrant. Very vibrant. Shark Week, the TV show, that's right. Welcome to Beyond Drew Shark Week. Sponsored by Bud Light. Uh, next up, let's see here. Getting a little bit closer there. Uh, let's look at the Pyra, take three. Pyara, there it is, Tetra. This thing looks freaking gnarly, y'all. Wait till we wait till you get a load of this. This looks like some like prehistoric, I don't even know what, or no, not prehistoric, but one of those fish that you'd see at like the bottom of the ocean. That's just ready to eat, like uh, lure them in and eat it. Look at the teeth there in the thing. <laughs> or no, it's like a vampire fish, isn't it? That's what it is, it's a vampire fish. Aren't, isn't it great, MS Queen? Yeah, the modders do a great job. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, no way, Bold. Wow. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, there you go. There's the uh, fish I couldn't pronounce four times in a row. Pyar Pyra that one, Tetra. I still can't do it. I don't know why. <laughs> awesome. It's one of those words that my mouth is like, mm, nope. We're just not going to be able to uh, do that. So if you could just go ahead and find the nearest exit from that word. Uh, next up, the Persian follow deer. I love the addition of all the uh, deer type species, uh, especially leading up to the wetlands pack because we have the, what is it called? The leche, the Nile leche or whatever, um, which is another really cool like deer looking addition coming with the DLC. But here we go. We have the Persian, uh, the Persian follow deer. Let's see who this is from. I can't just assume this time it's not a fish, so. <laughs> oh my goodness, such a long list. I didn't see it the first time through. Version, version. Oh, there it is. Uh, leaf and ginger toast. Look at this, love this. That's great. It looks a little bit similar. Oh, oh my gosh. Scroll wheel, don't do that. It looks a little bit similar to the white tail, a white tailed deer, but maybe the horns are like a little bit more definitive, I guess you'd say. It's not a deer at all. Lake Way, thank you. So you all can tell how much I'm familiar with that. It's not a deer at all. Gotcha. Well, they look a little bit the same. <laughs> yes, thank you all. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm definitely familiar with the, uh, the like the main animals in the wetland pack. Uh, you know, like the capybara, the otter, and all those. But I love le uh, learning about these new ones. Like yeah, the lakeway <laughs> and the uh, what's the um, exhibit animal that we're getting? I'm not gonna look it up real quick. But what's the exhibit animal that we're getting? It's something really cool as well. Uh, cool. But next up, let's look at. Oh, this thing is the craziest. We have to look at both of them. This is the coolest like tropical fish. I absolutely love it. But yeah, look at the uh, the colorful design on this. And you could totally tell it's like a, it might guess to be like a Pacific tropical type, you know, fish or like a barrier, reef barrier fish or something. The, yeah, the newt, I'm so excited for the newt. <laughs> And the, what the last one we got for the Europe pack was the Fire Salamander, right? And that one was also really cool. Like, I've never heard of that before and had some really interesting tidbits about it. And it looks really cool with the bright red, but no, the new as well. I think it's a cool addition to the exhibit animal animals that we get. Do, 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 do. Looks like a parrotfish. I, I believe that's what it is. Uh, yeah, it's a... Koi's or K's? Is that isn't it K's when it's spelled like that? K's parrotfish. And then let's look at the other one as well, the other uh sex, because it is a different color. It's like a black. Yeah, there we go. Var or Ver. I'm not sure how you, how you pronounce that with the thing above it. Oh, and it's actually swimming too. There you go. K's parrotfish, but like the black version of it. Oh, it's so um vibrant. Oh, excuse me. A little bit stuffed up from talking a whole bunch. But no, I love these. These look awesome. I'd love to make a uh, an aquarium 
featuring these kind of bright, vibrant fish like this. Sex going job right now. Right, so, mm, I have to get going. I'm running late. Traffic's terrible. Next up, um, another one that's just. I don't know how these fish get to be this color. Uh, the red Asian uh, arowana. But here you go. Uh, look at the bright, vibrant red. Let's get the silhouette off of it. There we go. But yeah, no, you just look at these last few fish and you just, you know, see the bright, vibrant colors on them. And it's like, how, why, what evolutionary traits is it like to ward off other fish? Be like, hey, man, I'm bright red. So, you know, you don't want to mess with me. Because isn't that like a frog thing, too? Like frogs, if they're brightly colored, it's like, hey, don't don't fuck with me. <laughs> don't mess with me. Um, so is that the same in the fish world? Or like, yeah, what's the... Uh, What's the reasoning between between uh, getting this bright pigmentation and everything? But really cool. Oh, and I haven't mentioned the creators of the last few, but it's Leaf and Buff Zoo. If you see a fish, it's Leaf and Buff Zoo. <laughs> the parrot fish got put on dark mode there. It did, didn't it? It was a little bit easier to uh, to look at. I look at everything in dark mode if it has an option to, have to. So much easier for the eyes. Uh, next up, let's look at the red peacock bass. And this is another one that has awesome uh, colors here. This is a little bit similar to the one that we saw earlier. Well, you know, did we look at this earlier? I think we did. Well, let's take a look at Juan again. Hello, Juan. Color perception is very different underwater. I didn't even think of that. So that's a, that's a good point. Didn't even think of that. There's the red peacock bass, I think for a second time. Next up, we're actually going to use the scroll bar over here. There we go. We have the red-tailed golden arwana, which earlier we saw the red Asian arwana, but this is the red-tailed, red-tailed golden arwana. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Like a big old goldfish. Due to getting uh, down and dirty, if you know what I mean, uh, brighter colors means a healthier and stronger individual. Ah, see, didn't think of that easy either. So it's like a mating thing, like a peacock thing, right? Like, hey, look at me, big boy. Ha -ha. <laughs> there are so many mods. It's on uh, light mode for social medias. Oh my gosh, I cannot do it. I, I do have like sensitive eyes though, like um, just IRL, like even, uh, when it's a really sunny day out in the winter time um, and there's like snow on the ground. Oh my gosh, I got snow blindness really, really bad. Um, so yeah, I'd put everything on dark mode for my eyes. Um, how are we doing, uh, Zoo Leopards? Good to see you, buddy. But very good stuff there. Um, did I mention who this was from? I'm assuming it's from Leaf and Buff Zoo, but let's not do that. Uh, Red-tailed Golden Arwana is going to be, look at my notes here. There it is from Leaf and Buff Zoo. So nice, good stuff there from, hey, nice, hey, thank you, uh, Domez, appreciate that, buddy, always do. Uh, work is going well for you, I assume, since no more regular every other um, every other day streams. Yes, it is, I'm kind of in a, a groove now with work and um, finding time to do like regular streams is a little bit tough, unfortunately. Um, might be able to do them during the week, but it won't be until later uh, in the afternoon. So, um, but yeah, no, let's get hearts and claps and chat if we can for Mr. Domez being awesome and donating there. Um, and yeah, no, again, uh, if I, if we do get streams going up again, it will have to be, um, in the afternoon at like three or four o'clock Eastern. Um, so yeah, that's the only thing. So, but no, thank you again, buddy. I appreciate you. So, uh, awesome. Hey, next up, next up, let's keep this mod train a rolling. Let's look at the, oh, we have a gazelle. We'll go back on land for a little bit. We have the uh, Hrim gazelle. Let's take a look at Eben. Not 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 that Eben from Kowali and, you know, all those awesome uh, series, but a different Eben. <laughs> uh, but here's the uh, Rim gazelle. This is from Leaf and Lion Rider, actually. I knew uh, like, uh, Lion Rider was in here somewhere today. Just couldn't remember where, but yeah, look at this. Now, was this the special mod? Uh, Leaf, I remember there was one that 
you mentioned um, that it was like the first one for uh, aces or whatever. Let me scroll back in the community showcase here and take a look. Is this the special mod? <laughs> there. Here it is. Uh, the No, the Persian Follow Deer was actually... Uh, one of the first mods is now up remastered using... Um, I keep calling it Aces, but it's Axie. Uh, using Axie. Okay, so the Persian Follow Deer was the one. I got you. And the fact that Nick made it. Oh, okay. Well, that's it's the most special then. You know, we got to make sure that Nick knows he's the most special boy. <laughs> Just kidding, kidding. Hey, Moonlight. What's up, buddy? Um, but cool. Anyways, yeah, really cool there the uh, for the Rim Gazelle. I've seen that. Let's go ahead and scroll on down a little more. Where are we at? Fran! Oh, my gosh. It's the six skill saw shark, and it's Fran. Just don't ask her to laugh. Or else that laugh will be stuck in my head all day. But look at this, the six gill uh, thingy. <laughs> I'm trying to find who made it over here. Six gill saw shark from Leaf and Buff Zoo. And this is a this is a work of science fiction right here, isn't it? This is just one of those things that you see it and you're like, oh, so that's where like you know, science fiction writers get their inspiration from. Yeah, if you ever just want like inspiration for a horror movie or a science fiction movie or an alien movie, just just look at underwater animals. You know, just look at ocean animals because they are the craziest things. Like I, I'm definitely down to like explore space, and I think it's a really important thing to do as a as a species. But heck, I think we need to devote as much, if not more, time and uh, resources to looking at what's in our own oceans because I feel like we. Uh, from everything that I've read and seen, it's like we don't know anything about them hardly, and we keep finding crazy things uh, down there <laughs> like this. Like, hey, you know, it'd be cool if we put like a saw on the front of a shark. Yeah, that's a good idea. They should be illegal. That's the thing, right? We don't even. Hi. Oh, okay. Hi. You need a scratch? Scratch, 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 scratch. <laughs> that's the thing. They should be illegal, right? And we don't even know about like half of them. Uh, according to like a lot of estimates, um, I feel like <laughs> so. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, next up, though, let's uh, look at another gazelle. The oh, I'm going to butcher this. The Sumerings gazelle. The Samerings. Well, look at these cute guys. Let's get uh, get it moving around here a little bit. Fish are just so weird. They are, aren't they? But they taste so good. But here's the Samerings gazelle. Look at that. Let's see if I can find. Uh, this is from Leaf on the solo tour. Leaf all by themselves made this there. This uh, mod. So yeah, it looks really good. You always love some more uh, subspecies or whatever you call them. Awesome, good stuff. Next up, I think we're gonna get close to the other animal that just passed by in the background. There. Let's see. Uh, first up, we're almost to the Tasmanian Devil, uh, but first up, we have the Spectic... Uh, oh, we already looked at that uh, earlier, but yeah, let's go to the Tasmanian Devil. And I'm glad that we're finally on this, because this is one of my favorites as well. These vicious little things. Everything I've seen with these things, they have they seem just really vicious. Maybe they're not, but again, all the video and you, like little YouTube clips I've seen, they just look like... Oh, <laughs> you do not want to be in a in a cage with these things. Maybe I'm wrong though. Uh, but this is from, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let me do this, there we go. Uh, Tasmanian Devil is from Leaf. I got Leaf on the solo tour there, so. Um, there are too many species of gazelle in my opinion. Same goes for uh, bars. You think a lot of them should just kind of be combined into like, nah, you should just be part of like the, you know, whatever gazelle, whatever. You should be, yeah. Are they vicious? Tasmanian devils? Yeah, yeah, they are, yeah. So like uh, everything I've seen is that, yeah, you don't want to be around a Tasmanian devil. They will mess your stuff up. <laughs> 
kind of like the uh, kind of like a honey badger type thing, you know, where their size is not indic uh, indicative of how vicious they can be. <laughs> they look too cute. You're right. Any animal that looks cute can't be vicious. It's it's uh, it's Mother Nature's rule, actually. So, um, but no, really good stuff there from uh, Leaf. I didn't realize you did that one uh, by yourself. Awesome job. Uh, next up, we saw the Specto, saw that. Tiger River Stingray. Yeah, some more Stingrays here. And this one's a really cool color. I like this one a lot. And it's a uh, really cool orange and uh, s like spotted uh, look to it. This one's cool looking. This is uh, different than what I thought it was going to look like. And they ripped that stuff down to the marrow. Oh my gosh. But here we go, another Stingray from Leaf and Buff Zoo. Uh, Frazzle says they are most are vicious among themselves, but I think they have the strongest mammal bite force for their size. Oh yeah, I wouldn't even want to, wouldn't even want to risk feeding them then. And you're saying there's a lot of like inner, inner fighting for them for a lot of it. Cool. Hey, next up, getting down to the to the nub here, getting down to the nitty gritty. Uh, we have the walleye. There are a lot of like river and lake fish starting to come up like the walleye and some uh, bass that I'm familiar with. But walleye, yeah, my grandpa used to always take me up north and go uh, walleye and perch and all those kind of fish fishing. A lot of fun doing that. These, oh man, the gills on these things though, you have to be so careful not to get your hands around those at all. I think it was my uncle or my cousin, one of the two. They accidentally got their hands really close to it. Sliced their hand right open. Like it was paper. And it was either, maybe it was the perch that did that. I can't remember, but it was one of them. It was the walleye or a perch that, yeah, it, it, cut, it sliced right through their hands like it was nothing. Um, but that's from Leaf and Buff Zoo as well. Uh, next up. Uh, white bass. Go. Now, white bass, I don't think I've actually fished for white bass. Where we were, it was like largemouth and small bass. Like, I love the little uh, dance that it does up. But white bass, I don't believe that is around my area. Are these like an eastern seaboard? Like, actually, usually they do a great job at the Zoopedia. Let me look at it. Do you go noodling? No noodling. Nope. <laughs> Nope, uh, hook, line, and sinker there. Freshwater fish. All right. Oh, it's in the, oh, it's in uh, Alaska. Okay, so yeah, no, definitely. That's why I'm not familiar with that kind of bass at all. <laughs> noodling, I forgot about noodling. <laughs> nice, next up, and we are almost done with the mods, my friends. Let's do the white spotted bamboo shark. This is another one of those uh, bottom feeders. Is there is there an actual word to use for those kind of fish? Like the nurse shark and the stingrays and stuff that are, you know, kind of like those bottom feeders, those bottom suckers. <laughs> uh, but yeah, cool, here we go. We have the, uh, again, the white spotted bamboo shark. And this is gonna be from, I did not put who it was from. I'm gonna assume Leaf and Buff Zoo, but it, I did. I forgot to put the buy part there. <laughs> there you go. Cool, and then last one. Congrats everyone, we made it through. Is the yellow edged moray eel. So we had the green moray, and now we have the yellow moray eel. That's a moray. But there you go, swimming through. And you were never a baby, by the way. We learned from Bold today. You were never a baby. You just appeared. How does that feel? You know what this looks like? It looks like the worms and tremors. If you've uh, ever seen tremors. Trailer park fish. I like that. Yeah, that's what their official, <laughs> official title is from now on. 
So, but hey, awesome job there. Um, I did forget to put the names up on the billboards. I just realized of all of our awesome modders, but uh, awesome job there from first off Leaf and Buff Zoo. Uh, give yourselves a round of applause for sure because you guys are just pump out the amazing uh, fishy fish mods here. So uh, yeah, really good stuff there from Leaf and Buff Zoo. First off, uh, Frazzle64, awesome job from you. Phonetic Mods, um, Bongo Hardwood, Nicholas Lion Rider, Ginger Toast, Let's see, Harley Quinn's Ego, uh, Siaka. I'm probably going to miss a few people. Apologies to them. I'm just kind of scrolling through my list here real quick. Uh, Mega Gaming Rex, good job. Uh, thank you there. And yeah, no, shout out to all of our modders there for getting these amazing creations for free to, all, uh, to the community and everything. So... All right, let's go ahead and move on to the blueprints section. We're gonna go ahead and start with the thumbnail from today. And that is gonna be from Simply Savannah, going back to our roots here. For those of you that have been playing Zoo Tycoon type games since the beginning, we have the aviary from Zoo Tycoon. And yeah, you can recognize that immediately, can't you? You can just immediately recognize if you ever played Zoo Tycoon 1 and had the aviary. Actually, when I see this, I can picture the bird noise. You know, when you place down any of the buildings in Sue Tycoon 1, you can just like hear the bird noise that happens when you put it down. Kind of like the swamp, or the, not the swamp, the insect house. I'll never forget the insect house noise. Uh, um, but yeah, look at this. This is absolutely amazing and spot on. Need to build an updated version. You know, I was gonna ask you, and um, I guess now is a good time, sure. Um, yeah, didn't you build this like when the game almost first came out, but you just had it on private this whole time? Is that the story? behind this because yeah i definitely remember seeing this um on your channel uh, but there's also a little bit of an interior here i love the ropes that you uh have put here you always see that in aviaries to help the birds stay in hey uh jen's a game player hope you're having a good day there love the little uh water or drinking area here always sanitize your hands before entering and after exiting as well birds are gross yeah, let's take a look on the inside here. <clears throat> Excuse me. There you go. You can definitely set this up with some uh, peacocks or maybe the upcoming uh, crane. The crane might kind of work in here as well. But yeah, very, very cool stuff there. All right, next up. Let's take a look from Lobry or Lobry. Uh, this is a really useful pack actually. So definitely look into this. Uh, this is gonna be the garden pack from Lobry or Lobry again, whichever one. Uh, but yeah, look at all of the different assets that you get with this little uh, pack here. So if, yeah, if you wanna get a proper gardening type pack, they have you very, very well covered. All these different planters, different rows of fruits and veggies it kind of looks like. Um, yeah, look, this is awesome. Very typical, you know, kind of scenery assets that you would see inside of a garden. All the fences, got like beehives. Really, really cool. I love the uh, trash cans back there. the uh, truss here and everything oh that's a fun idea with the like freshly uh made tree the hedges but very very cool yeah so i love this uh garden pack definitely don't sleep on that there's some really uh nice assets there uh, to get that and of course uh, some more foliage we got some good uh, custom foliage in the background that's really useful so yeah really really awesome stuff there from uh Lobry. yeah uh, sims vibes i love that yeah that's a perfect way to put it sims vibes Exactly. Uh, next up from Sawdust, if two things from Sawdust here this week. We're gonna look at the giant bee. And there it is, that is a bee that is bigger than a normal sized bee. One would consider it giant. So there you go, if you are making a, this is a, I think that Sawdust is making a insect, um, like house basically right now. In the entranceway to it, they have like a, 
uh, almost like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids vibe going on. Now, it's a pretty fun build to follow on Burnation and my Discord and everything. Um, but yeah, no, here's a, a B from that. And then on the uh, opposite, we have a, a little microscope here. It has all the different, you know, lenses and everything. But yeah, that works. That's a nice little detail to add in. Yeah, the B, it's pretty great, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, of course, Lovro, and thanks for uh, submitting it. It's a really great build. Uh, but yeah, no, really good stuff there from Sawdust. Uh, fun little scenery piece to use and a pretty useful little backstage item as well. <laughs> nice zebras, yeah. Uh, and then the last thing for the blueprints um, are actually, did you see them? Do you see them? Oh, they're right here. They are these uh, benches. They are not um, usable, quote unquote, but they do heckin' look great. Uh, but yeah, we have It's a Bench from Bold, and that's actually the name of it. It's called It's a Bench. <laughs> and bold made it so very there you go really really cool useful bench and i may have made it a little bit too small i didn't put down frank beforehand oh i did i made it way too small um so yeah when you put it down you want to actually bring it up just a little bit that's better okay <laughs> um so but yeah there you go there is a bench to kind of place around uh your parks or your zoos and everything it's a bench you know what's that it's a bench <laughs> nice so all right let's go ahead and again awesome job there from our blueprint makers um and awesome job again to our uh modders there as well if you'd like to submit anything don't forget to join the discord my discord link as always down in the description we have the community showcase tab and we'll do this uh every other week we will show off your mods your blueprints your zoos you name it so yeah, definitely head on over to the Discord and submit your items. Yeah, right, Claire? She uh, she doesn't beat around the bush there. She doesn't beat around the bush at all. It's like, what's that? A bench. Truer words have never been spoken. <laughs> all right, so next up, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the only... Yes, the only zoo that we have um, sent in, and it is going to be an update to Ash Zoo. We've taken a look at Ash Zoo two or three times now, I believe. Um, and this is from Moonlight Fox, who is always in chat, hanging out, being awesome. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty fun update to Ash Zoo. I poked my nose around in it a little bit before stream, just to make sure everything was working okay. And then don't forget also, um, yesterday we, we being myself, uh, Simply Savannah and S Dork, S Dan Wolf, we did a take two podcast, which we were talking about it afterwards. We got to change it to like take three podcasts, I think, because, uh, Savannah is going to kind of be a, uh, a mainstay for the, for the podcast whenever she can join us. But, uh, yeah, we had a really fun, um, take three podcast yesterday talking about the, uh, the upcoming wetlands pack. Kind of talked about all of our favorite animals from the pack. I'm going to be, uh, or my favorite animal is definitely the crane. I think the crane just has a certain elegance to it. Looks really cool. And just whenever we get a new, uh, a bird, even if it's a flightless bird, um, in game, I always get a little bit giddy. I get a little bit like, oh, maybe where it's going to happen. <laughs> maybe next pack, it'll finally happen where they fly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so no, we're, uh, Definitely check out that podcast from yesterday. It's about an hour, just over an hour long. So it's nice and easy to throw on in the background. There's no like real visuals tied in to what we're talking about. So you don't have to sit there and watch it, watch it. Um, so yeah, this is uh, your Asian area for Ash Zoo. Well, the start of it, gotcha, cool. So we'll check out this update to the Asian area for Ash Zoo and then hopefully see a completed version of it the next time that we check out ash zoo but nice we'll head over uh we'll head straight over because yeah i know we, we've seen a lot of um ash zoo and it's while well, it's been built on so we won't check out every everything it was a fun podcast yeah no it was it was really good we got to talking about a lot of good good uh topics um i got a few messages actually about our idea of you know bringing content creators or just community creators onto the live streams 
Uh, people seem really receptive about that idea. I got at least two or three, 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 um, three messages about that um, since the podcast came out saying that they thought that was a really good idea. And yeah, again, like that's, you know, they did that for Planet Coaster where um, I got invited on to hang out with Shantae and we toured um, a few of my theme parks that I built and a roller coaster that I built. And she asked me questions about it and it was like an hour long and, you know, people from my community who would maybe never think about watching a Frontier uh, live stream or a Planet Coaster or Planet Zoo live stream, like official live stream, you know, they came over and watched because I was being featured on it. And um, then same thing, you know, people that would never look to find me or my channel were able to because I was on a official Planet Coaster live stream. Uh, so I think it's, yeah, I think it's a win-win for, uh, for everybody. And again, really nothing against like Elt or any of them that are playing the game, but you know, they don't have, I think Savannah mentioned this yesterday, they don't have the, you know, five, six, seven, sometimes eight hours <laughs> that we will de uh, devote to playing just Planet Zoo, you know? So that's why a lot of us are experts in our craft when it comes to Planet Zoo and they're, uh, you know, they're developers, they're social media managers, they have other things to devote their time to, they am playing the game. Do, 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 do. Ding your zoo in time. No, no, uh, the cutoff is um, last night, so Saturday night at about uh, 10 p.m. or uh, 9 p.m. No, I'm sorry, 10 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, so 9 p.m. my time. Yeah, I do it about 9 p.m. my time so I can start to really get a final count of everything. So, yep. do, 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 do. totally be game for going on a live stream with Frontier. I would love to see it. And that's that's the thing is like, <clears throat> when I went on the live stream with Frontier, I was still a, a relatively small creator, um, you know, and that really helped me a lot. Um, I was still, I think under the thousand sub threshold or maybe like something like that um but no it, it really did it helped me get my name out there to the the mainstream quote unquote uh planet coaster or planet zoo people because you know you got to think about it the way that like myself or s dan build or like a lot of you that are uh, watching the way that you build and make content like we're like a niche within a niche you know what i mean like the niche is already planet zoo and then we do this like realistic or you know realistic quote unquote um hardcore type building and that's like a niche within itself because like the majority of planet zoo players um you know if you look at like day lady designer or rudy rinkmel nothing against i'm not saying their skills or their builds are lesser or anything but you know they do more um a wide stroke appeal build, wide appeal builds is what i'm trying to say more so than like the niche hardcore builds that a lot of us do so um yeah and i lost the point that i was making there because i want to go explore the oak family asia trek <laughs> um anyways let's bring it back let's go explore ash zoos um phase one let's call it phase one of the oak family asia trek so shout out to the oak family professor oak for donating some moolah some monet for uh for this asian trek here this is pretty cool all right let's head uh let's head on in i want to back up just a little bit make sure we're not missing anything behind us no it looks like we can just head on forward well cool all right so we'll unpause it seems like the frames are running okay we're getting about 25 to 30. southeast asia oh that's cool I like all the little uh, scenery bits that you have coming out here kind of see the direction you're going in the backstage areas are looking pretty neato speedo Ooh, hi tape ears i love the noises you make this is a wonderful habitat design. Y'all see this? It's it's kind of uh, hidden really well, but that's a really nice habitat design right there. Very uh, tucked away, right? I need to start doing this a lot more with the uh, habitat design when I when I start building again. But making these little pocket gardens, or like I don't even, yeah, I guess like pocket landscape in front. So you almost have like these. Um, I mean, like windows, right? Where you just, it kind of frames your view really, really well um, when, you, when you're looking over there. So anyways, yeah, I, I like that. I like it a lot. Let's head into the caves. 
Do, do, do. I think it's partly happened as Bo was such a part of the community herself. That's a good point. You know, I didn't really think of that, but Bo was. Bo was um, the community there for a long time. And, and it kind of rubbed off onto Shantae as well, because, you know, obviously Shantae and Bo were connected at the hip. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of a good point. Uh, yeah, no, Bo had a, a really big uh, hold on the community as a whole. So. Ah, this is cool. Sponsored by... There you go. Get, get to learn here. Meet our orangutans. Orangutans. Yeah, very Animal Kingdom style. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, isn't it? I love all the details around here. Look at the camera and fire extinguisher or fire things. I, I'm pretty sure that the orangutan is supposed to be in here, but you know what? It's kind of fun. Is he supposed to be there? Probably not, but you know what? Me and, uh, me and, uh, uh, uh me and this guy are hanging out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't mind. We're just hanging. We're chilling. This is a really cool, uh, indoor section though. Good job. All right. Have a good one there, Joe. Have a good one, Joe. You know what's cool too is, um, a lot of people forget to do this, myself included, but you notice the leaves falling? The, the FX, the leaves blowing the FX. Uh, that, those kind of like little details add so much to an area. <clears throat> Pretty cool, like all the leaves. Looks like it's all getting crumpled up in the sides there. This is really, oh, I love, oh, hey, y'all. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Look at this, look at this reveal right now. Moonlight. Pulling out all the punches right now. I freaking love this. And of course, you know, kind of has that Wyatt Andrews uh, inspiration from like Thornton is what I think of, Thornton Hill Zoo. I love that like, yeah, the Asian section in Thornton Hill Zoo that Wyatt did, it like inspired a whole like slew of people to um, kind of build in this kind of style here. Yeah, sight lightning reveal. I, I love that. That was a great reveal. Yeah, that was 11 out of 10 reveal. <laughs> nice, Harry. <laughs> oh, man, this is a great... This might be one of my uh, favorite habitats in the whole zoo so far. Oh, is that why it's climbing structure? That's why it looks so familiar. But again, yeah, not to take away from that uh, that reveal right there. I love these little cages too that you put out everywhere. Man, that that is great. Yeah, the right the the foliage and gardening did really good. So awesome stuff. Cool. I think everyone's in agreement. Say that is a great reveal. Head on in here. You see our bent arongs. Oh, look at them all. <laughs> oh, remember last week? I think it was moonlight. Yeah, that gave us the uh, birds and the grasses and everything. You can see them in in full swing actually being used wonderful wonderful that's a fun uh, use of the temple piece there I never would have thought to just sink it down ah, nope try again what did I what did I call the binturong no that's uh no the binturong smells like popcorn what's this one called again babarusa Creepy pig. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> oh, even from over here, it looks awesome. Damn. Love that. Okay, cool. Um, Let's see. Did I miss a turn? Or does it keep going through here? Oh, I missed a turn, I think. It's interesting. It's like a glass wall looking into the backstage. Oh, oh, we go this way? No. No. I'm confused. One second. <laughs> does it dead end or does it keep going? See, we came from that way. Had that awesome reveal here that I think it dead ends. I was bent to, I was bent to wrong. <laughs> I'll 
Okay, so it, I can tell. Does it go that? Do we go this way? I think you somehow go this way. There's a door past the Barbarossa's? Okay. Door? I'm not sure. Um, cool. Looks like we have another habitat here. Ah, okay. There we go. Now we have the Bent Rights. <laughs> oh, I like this waterfall coming down. That's cool. That uh, log going over top there. I went the right way. Okay, cool, cool. We're back on track. <laughs> We're back on track. Oh, that's cool. You have the um, like telescope there. Very nice. Awesome. Right, let's keep going this way. So many details. This is everywhere you look, right? Details, details, details. Oh, that's a fun little shot right there with the building in the background. Love that. And not in here. Anyone need some water? We've been walking a while, I know. No entry this way. Oh, look at the boat out there. Hello, uh, Jaskoran's boat. <laughs> Where's this lead out to, though? Just out to the dock? That's pretty cool. All right, and over. Hey, hello, Komodos. Yeah, the foliage, it's very vibrant with the like grays and blacks and browns of the color palette. Cool, very cool. And on out. Nice. Wow, that's so cool. I love all the different views we're getting here. Our bears. Sun bears. Now we're kind of up top, it feels like. And, um... Is this an aviary? Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> We're gonna get a big old bird in the middle there. Like this path and railing. Yeah, they did a lot of good, um, intricate work with that. Oh, that's cool. So just does a, a circle around it. Very cool aviary there. Get a pretty cool view looking out over this way. Holy smokes. Is the path custom? Oh my gosh, it is. I just noticed that. Did y'all realize that? <clears throat> that the path is completely covered custom on this uneven terrain like this and it looks this good? Ridiculous. That probably took forever. And look at all the uh, periwinkle on the side too. Let's see this view. This would be great. Yeah, that's pretty good. Get to look down on the Komodos. Mad Men, yeah, right? Because again, look if you look back, it's definitely not, you know, full. It's pretty level, but it's definitely not fully level. And it, that, that, that tripped me out. <laughs> this is a really good use of this tree. What's this tree called? The Wumba or the Umba? The Ambua tree or whatever? I uh, rarely get to use it because it's really big and sprawling like this, but this is perfect for it over here uh, to shade this section in. All right, so now we're coming into an Indian section, India. And there you go, Lucas, Leaf, Lion, ZZ, Planet Leafy, uh, Zeno, and me. He did a me. <laughs> awesome. Then we covered these up for now because I think this is the where we're coming into like the second section. That's kind of a little bit more incomplete. Kind of looks like it. All right, Moonlight. Um, I will go ahead and leave it there if that's cool with you, and then we will see the second half um when you are fully finished up but holy cow my friend that that is fantastic i think everyone from what i saw in the comments everyone was pretty blown away uh from the now let's see how this is laid out because i always love to see the layouts of it it basically does like a a circle because we started or not a circle but um yeah kind of a circle because we started here <clears throat> 
we came through here see here's that um half built thing here we came in and saw the oh no that's all backstage over there okay never mind we did not go here's our tapirs all the backstage work here for the orangutans orangutans i like the numbers on top of the buildings too that's a cool um detail Yeah, very, very intricate, right? Yeah, very intricate. Yeah, I, that's exactly right, Bold. Like, you know, it took us however long to kind of like, we speedily kind of went through that, but still, it took us a little bit of time. Um, and you would think like, oh man, I bet this covers like half the zoo or something. And then you like really scroll out. And it's like, oh, you know, that's like just a little subsection, but they crammed in and not even crammed. I mean, the animal habitats they do have a good amount of room and they're very well designed and have really good foliage and all that kind of fun stuff you know there's like what one two three four five i think right there five with the aviary at least five or six animals with absolutely amazing habitats in a very in a area that probably could fit like one elephant habitat so um yeah no that's that's just a really good uh, showing of how you can utilize footprints, small footprints really, really well and still get a absolutely stunning result there. So awesome stuff. So uh, you've been working on it since Christmas. Hey, it shows my friend, it definitely shows. So hopefully, um, you know, in the next few months here, we get a, another update from you on uh, on Ash Zoo. Let's go ahead and leave it here. See if we can see any of the, uh, the orangutans hanging out so but hey cool let's go ahead and wrap it up there my friends i'm gonna go and head out for the day so but hey thanks so much everyone who uh submitted something always do appreciate you all doing that uh again don't forget if you'd like to um you can go ahead and no we're not starting soon we already started you're gonna have a great week have a great week um but yeah no go ahead and submit something to the discord if you would like to i uh, have it shown off and yeah again don't forget we are not live next sunday we'll be live the Sunday after that at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we'll be back on the bi-weekly uh, schedule for the community showcases. So, and that should line up pretty well um, with the Wetlands DLC coming out. So uh, don't forget to start to work on your Wetlands DLC habitats. Uh, I'd love to see some uh, different takes on the animals that are coming, especially the platypus. I feel like the platypus is going to be an interesting one to see what people kind of, uh, what direction people kind of take for it there. So, uh, but yeah, start to get your wetland animal habitats turned in and we'll take a look at them in the next coming weeks there. But uh, hey, awesome. Thanks everyone. Appreciate you as always. Talk to you soon. Bye.